Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I'm going to talk about our narcissist demons. All right. I was asked to podcast on this. I get so many people that get on the posts and say they're demons, they have demonic spirits, and everything like that. And they're like, please, can you podcast on how narcissists are demons? All right. And here's how I feel about everything with regard to narcissists. All right. Like people are sitting there, they're saying, well, you know, it's not right. It's a personality disorder and these people need help and everything like that. Well, here's the thing with a narcissist. A narcissist doesn't see anything wrong with their behavior. So if they don't see anything wrong with their behavior, how are they ever going to change that behavior? That's why 99% of the times a narcissist will never change, okay? Because they don't see that there's a problem with them. The problem always lies in you, all right? But when we talk about whether they have demonic spirits and everything like that, you got to really think about it. See, you really have to think about it in a spiritual way. You have to say to yourself, okay, in on this earth, you have good and you have evil, right? And it, it all depends on your beliefs. What do you believe? But if you're a spiritual person and you believe in God and you believe, you know, you're supposed to do the right thing, you're supposed to speak the truth, you know, you don't want to hurt people. You follow God's principles, you know, you do the right thing. If you see somebody hurting, you try to help somebody, you know, you you want to do the right thing, all right? When, when you take a narcissist, a narcissist has a genetic predisposition to what their personality is going to be and then just compound that with their childhood, all right? Like a lot of them have had childhood trauma. They grew up in abusive households. They were never v- validated. Or the other um, scenario is that they were the golden child that was able to do whatever they wanted to do. They felt entitled. They grow up later on and they feel entitled that they, you know, they don't have to wait on line at a restaurant. They can cut the line. They could talk to you any which way they want, Okay because they feel entitled. And this is a very controversial topic because a lot of people, the big controversy is a lot of people say, oh, they don't know what they're doing, okay? But they do know right from wrong. They do know that they're lying. They do know how to manipulate around different people, okay? They know who they can push and who they can't push. So they're very self-aware, okay, you guys? They're very self-aware. The thing is, a narcissist needs that, they have that thirst for control. And a lot of the reason for that is during their childhood, they may have grown up and they never felt like they were in control. They felt out of control as a kid, okay? Maybe they had very toxic parents that always told them what to do. You know, that's another thing too, the generational curse where it gets passed down from generation to generation. And this is so true, you guys, all right? When you look at a narcissist, when you look at their parents, a lot of times they come from narcissistic families. So this is what they know. They haven't been shown love. And I'm not justifying it by any means, okay? By any means. Because I had somebody get on the post and say, Oh, well, don't make excuse. I'm not making excuses for anybody, okay? Because you make a choice when you do something right and wrong, all right? No matter how you were brought up. There's plenty of people that grew up in toxic households, okay? Myself included, that know the difference from right and wrong and would not want to hurt somebody else, okay? So it's a personal choice that you make whether you want to hurt somebody else and to get ahead and you don't care who you hurt or, you know, you don't want to do that because you know what it is to to hurt somebody. You've been that hurt person. So the thing is, when you're a spiritual person and you're a person that believes in right and wrong, you're an honest person, you have a moral compass, a compass, right? You're not somebody that's going to steal from somebody because you know it's not right. All right. You don't want to hurt somebody. You're not somebody who's going to hurt somebody that has a disability or an elderly person or something like that, like rob them on the street. 
But a narcissistic person doesn't care. They don't have a moral compass. And the a lot of people say that's because they have demonic spirits. Demonic spirits have taken them over and made them evil to the point where they don't care. You know, they're about being wicked to people. And a lot of times they that you could say that with the narcissistic rage. When you confront a narcissist or you call them out on something they're doing wrong, what's the first thing they're going to do? They're going to come back at you, but they're going to come back at you in a fierce, wicked way. They're going to hit you below the belt. They don't just come back and, you know, say what they got to say. They want to hurt you. A lot of them can be very wicked about it. That's one of the clues that you know you're dealing with a narcissist because they don't want to just defend themselves. They want to make you pay. They want to make you pay because basically they are hurt people. Hurt people hurt other people. But that's no excuse. That's no excuse, okay? So the thing is, if you're a spiritual person and you believe, you know, you have a moral compass, you know that these people, because of whatever they went through in their lives, they they went the other way, okay? They went the other way. They look at the world in terms of here and now, okay? They don't look at it as far as, okay, you know, uh, my journey on earth, my soul, this is just part of the journey that my soul will go on, is my, my journey on earth and my soul will travel after I die, okay? This is just part of where my soul's going. A, a narcissist doesn't think like this, okay? A narcissist is worried about the here and now. They're worried about having a nice car. They're worried about, you know, showing up to the Joneses. They're worried about having, they're worried about materialistic things, okay? That's why a lot of them are opportunists. That's why a lot of them manipulate people, especially in dating, if they see somebody has something. You know, today it's not just about manipulating to get sex. It's manipulating to get some kind of financial benefit because sex is so abundant everywhere. And that's due to social media and options. There's just so much supply out there that, you know, they're not chasing the sex. They're chasing the money. Okay, believe me when I tell you, and you see it on the dating apps all the time, all the scammers, all the con artists, and it's male and female, okay? It's not one gender specific because it goes both ways. You have plenty of female narcissistic con artists out there looking for vulnerable men or women and trying to manipulate them for what they have, okay? Maybe they want them to invest in a business. Maybe they want them to, you know give them money. And all they got to do is pour on the charm. That's it. You take a vulnerable person, somebody who's been hurt, somebody who's looking for love. And all they got to do is tell that person how much they love them, how they've, you know, they've been looking for somebody like you. Oh, God brought you to me. They love to use, you know, oh, God brought me to, they love to throw in religion. Okay. They try to play that they're religious. You know, they've been praying for somebody like you. This is how they future fake. They talk about, oh, you know, if we had kids, uh, I hope they look like you and a uh, high future wifey and everything like that. Anybody talks like that to you within the first three months, you're dealing with a fake phony con artist. Okay. They're looking for something out of you. Could be sex, could be money. It could just be some some narcissists just want to play you. They just want to, they get a certain rush out of knowing they're fooling you. That's why a lot of them, like I said before, it's not just about, you know, cheating to cheat. It's the deception. They love the deception because it gives them a rush. It makes them think, <laughs> I'm so clever. I know something that you don't. You think I'm loyal and I'm really cheating behind your back. That makes me feel superior. And what does a narcissist want to feel? They want to feel superior because they're very insecure, low self-esteem, and a lot of it has to do with their childhood, okay? Guarantee. A lot of it has to do with their childhood 
where they either felt like they were nothing, they were never validated from the home they grew up in or however they grew up in, or they have this entitlement that they feel they could treat people any which way or talk to people any which way because they never had rules and regulations and boundaries as a kid, okay? So when we talk about demonic spirits in a narcissist, what it is is if these people don't have a moral compass, if they don't see a higher thing above, okay? If they don't believe in a God and they don't believe that they need to follow any kind of rules in life, all right? Then what they say is they've been taken over by the devil, by demonic spirits, okay? And they do devious, evil things, okay? What does that mean? That means they treat you lousy, okay? They hurt people. They emotionally hurt people. Some of them physically hurt people. They steal from people. They try to destroy your self-esteem, all right? That's why I tell you guys, when you're out there, and I know it's hard, I know it's hard because you have a lot of damaged people out there that have been through stuff, okay? They've been through shit. And so a lot of people have a hard edge. And you really need to find somebody that has a moral compass, that, you know, is an honest person, is not a liar. And People think like, oh, well, you know, people change and everything like that. Like the narcissist told me they, you know, they've changed or they'll change for me and everything like that. Here's the thing with that, you guys. Can people change? People can change certain things, but not everything. If somebody's basic character is that they've been a liar all their life, guess what? They're still going to be a liar, okay? The only difference is... Once they know that you're on to them, they're going to lie even better, all right? The more a narcissist knows that you're on to them, the more they're going to manipulate better, okay, and twist the truth better so that they could try to fool you, all right? But remember, it's right there. Look at their pattern of behavior. Look at how they treat you. If they say they're going to call, are they calling? If they say they're going to text, are they texting? Are they consistent? All right? Like narcissists, this is how they fool people, you guys. They're very consistent in the beginning. The first uh, two to three months, you're going to get consistency. You're going to get them blowing up your phone. They're going to come on fast and furious. And you're going to think that, oh, I met the one. This could be it, okay? Oh my goodness, I finally found, this person's just like me. They're having, a, and they're gonna also victim victimize themselves, okay? This is what a narcissist does. When they meet you, they're gonna put on the pathetic act, all right? Like they've been hurt. They did everything for their exes. Their exes cheated on them. You know, it's it's their ex's fault, Unless, you know, they're, they're smart and they figure you're on to that, then they may try to play you and say something like, uh, oh, no, my ex, uh, we got along. It just, you know, uh, we just grew apart or something like that because they figure if they badmouth their ex, you're going to automatically, you know, label them as, you know, something bad. But the thing is, a narcissist doesn't have a moral compass. So if you're a spiritual person and you believe that, you know, evil spirits come into people that are weak, that don't have that that more that Holy Spirit within them, all right? When we say that people believe in God, okay, and people believe in God in different ways, different faiths, whatever your faith is, they believe in a higher being, all right? So when you have faith in in believing in God, you're going to like I said, you're going to have a moral compass and you're, you're going to have a conscious, conscious. All right. I can't talk this morning. Sorry. You're going to, you know, you're going to feel bad if you do something that's not right. You're going to feel bad if you lie to somebody. All right. And you're also going to worry that if you do shady things later on at judgment, you're going to end up in hell. 
All right. Yes, I'm getting spiritual on you and I'm I'm laying it out there for you guys. I'm a very spiritual person and I believe in that. And I believe that you know what? Our soul goes on a journey and our time here on earth is a test. God is testing you. All right. This is what I believe. They are testing you to see if you will hold that faith. All right. And a lot of people have a hard time doing it because they've been through very hard struggles. All right. People have dealt with children with cancer. People have de dealt with, you know, a lot of terrible things that have gone on in their lives. All right. Like for me, you know, I have a child that's very autistic. It has been a struggle and I've been doing it on my own. All right. Very, very tough, you guys. All right. And he's strong like a bull and it's tough. It's really tough. But what gets me through is my faith. And I believe that. All right. I believe that, you know what? God is testing me. When I ended up in five different ERs last fall, God is testing me to see how strong, you know, God will test you to see how strong you are. But if you have that, you know, higher level of spirituality and you believe you push through and you get through. Okay. But when you're somebody that doesn't have that, that doesn't believe in, you know, the afterlife or you don't believe in God or anything like that. You just think in terms of, you know, life on earth, material things and everything like that. You're not going to believe that a narcissist has demonic spirits in them. You're going to say, oh, that's nonsense. You know, that's a personality disorder and everything like that. So it's really what your belief is. Okay. It's really what you believe. And the thing is, you know, when somebody can hurt somebody else, when somebody can hurt somebody else, you have to say to yourself, they have, you know, they, they don't care. They don't care. And, and this is the thing. This is why people have such, this is the, the paradox that goes on today in this world is the struggle between good and evil. Okay. It's like, I, I did a video for, for you guys um, on my social media. And I said, you can't always think that everybody thinks like you, that because you're a good person, because you call all the time, because you're honest, because you don't cheat, that just because somebody's being nice, that they're not going to do it. Okay. The devil comes as your friend, not as your enemy. All right. Remember that the people that are closest to you are going to hurt you the most. All right. And that's, that's the way the devil wants it because they know that the closest people can hurt you the most. All right. But the, the point is you've got to have your own strength within yourself that no matter what is thrown out at you, you could stand on your own. Okay. This is why I tell you guys, you've got to be independent. You've got to strengthen yourself financially, physically, mentally, wherever you feel weak, you've got to strengthen it. Okay. If financially you're not doing well, you better figure out another way to build yourself up. Do a side hustle. Okay. There's a lot of different, start a podcast, write an ebook. There's a lot of different ways. Get on Google, do your due diligence and research, research, research. Okay. Save a little money each week if you can, and you'll be surprised how that money builds up. If you can, all right? If you can. The bottom line is you need a plan, all right? You need a plan to move ahead. But I don't want to go off on a tangent. I want to just talk about demonic spirits and everything like that. And personally, I feel that if somebody could do evil things to somebody, they've been taken over and they have lost, you know, their... They have lost who they are to doing evil things, okay? Because when you are somebody that has faith, you're not going to do evil things and want to hurt somebody. It will affect you when you hurt somebody else, all right? If you're an empathic type of person, it will affect you to hurt somebody else because you, 
you're a person of God. You have beliefs. You don't want to hurt another human being. All right. You're a humanitarian. You don't believe in hurting other people. Okay. And people that want to hurt other people have a demonic spirit. Point blank period. All right. But it really boils down to who you are, what you believe, what you've been through. And, you know, when you've been through shit, when you've been through shit and you've made it through and you've said to yourself, you know what? My faith got me through that. My faith got me through that. When I had nobody, I had nobody. Okay. My faith got me through. All right. It's just something inside you that you believe. All right. Some people get it. And some people don't. And for the people that don't, don't try to convince people to be something they're not. You just have to step back from that and disengage because they don't get it. All right. The people that get it know who they are. And the people that don't let them do what they got to do. You just don't need to be around them. Okay. Because their way of living is shifty, shady, and sneaky. And it only gets you in a bad place. That's why I say you reap what you sow, okay? When you live a certain way, it's going to come back to you. Because people tell me all the time, how do you get revenge on the narcissist? Oh my, you know, they, they played me, they manipulated me. You don't need to get revenge on that narcissist. That narcissist is going to get it back. Believe me when I tell you, I've seen it. You know when they get it back? They get it back later on in life a lot of times, okay? They get sick, they're lonely, there's nobody there that cares about them because they burnt so many bridges, they hurt so many people, and guess what? They'll be laying there in that hospital by themselves or in that nursing home by themselves, very bitter, all right? This is what happens. Plus, later on, they have to face God in judgment, all right? Believe me when I tell you, all right? So, you know, what you throw out in life will come back to you. All right. You know, there's an old saying that says, when you spit in the wind, be careful, come back and hit you in the face. And it's so true. You guys, people that live crooked lives that manipulate that lie, take, look at criminals. All right. Criminals are narcissistic, right? They steal from people, they cheat people and everything like that. Eventually it's going to catch up to you. Just like the narcissist, they lie, they manipulate they hurt innocent people, but eventually, you know what happens to a narcissist? They're going to run into another narcissist that's going to play them, all right? Because it's just inevitable. So, you know, that's the order of things in life. When you understand life, you understand the order of things. It's just a matter of time, all right? But you don't want to preoccupy yourself with that kind of stuff. You want to be around positive things, positive people, people that add to your life, not take away from your life. So when you see these red flags, okay, that somebody doesn't have a moral compass, you've got to disengage and back off from that person because that person's only going to wreak havoc on your life. Believe me when I tell you. The problem is people wait too long and then they spent years with this toxic person thinking they're going to change or they're in a bad situation and they regret it later on when the, the relationship eventually wears down. All right. So you guys stay with people that are kind. All right. And the only way you're going to know that somebody is kind, has a kind heart, is empathetic, is if you're going some, through something really rough that kind person is going to be there for you. But that narcissist, that narcissist is going to ghost on you. They are not going to be there for you during hard times. Believe me when I tell you, I've seen it time and time again, and it's happened to me. All right. So don't ever rely on a narcissist when you're going through something really hard in your life, because a narcissist doesn't want to be bothered. You're a burden to a narcissist. They just are self-absorbed, selfish. They don't believe in giving. When you believe in God, you believe in giving. You believe in helping. You believe in kindness and love. So surround yourself with people that are kind and loving, not people that are takers or that criticize and judge you. Cut those people off, all right? So I hope that, hope that helps you guys, all right? And have a great day. Um, if you have anything you want me to podcast on, any topics, you can email me at thegameexposed 
at AOL.com. Okay? Have a great day, you guys. Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. If you have a dating or relationship question or you need an opinion on something, go to the link in the bio and ask a question and get a personalized video sent back to you. It's in the link tree slash the game exposed and you could ask a question and get a personalized video confidentially sent to you um, answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. If you're having trouble in your relationship, or maybe you're dealing with somebody who's a narcissist, and you're really confused, you don't know what to do, you need some advice or some clarity, well, I offer email and also phone coaching. Please go to the podcast description for the link on how to get email or phone coaching, or maybe you just have a question that you need answered. All questions will be answered confidentially. So go to the podcast description where it tells you how Yaz can answer your questions.